Here we are in Paris, sitting in the wonderfully elegant salon of Madame Christine Jolivet Erly, the daughter of the composer André Jolivet. He had quite a good sense of humour, didn't he? He did, but you know, he was also a um, hard worker. He could uh, spend uh, several hours a day to compose and then leave the house at night to be a conductor in the Comédie Française that was just after the war. He loved life. In fact, he also had a, a big sense of humor and I believe he won't have been a composer if he had not been like that <laughs> because it needs a, a lot of humor. I've been always thinking that we never had time to speak, um, I would say, uh, to have important exchanges, you know, because life and the, the, the rhythm of life was such that I realized when he died that a lot of questions I never asked him. Have you found some of those answers, though, in looking at materials that you might not have delved into before, in taking responsibility for his archives? Not really, because, you know, one of the, uh, the main questions was, how did you uh, become a composer from an inside point of view, if I may say? I would have liked him to, to explain how it, it worked. It's a, a real important question, but it's not only a question for composers, but for painters, for writers, for artists. What do they feel inside which make them becoming what they are? What's going on inside? From, from the brain, from the soul, from whatever it is. And that has been, uh, to me, it's a, it's a terrific uh, problem. But there's also the wonderful story of him being in one of these places, being struck by inspiration and he had to write down this I, but, you know, the, the, the place was a beach near Saint-Tropez and he had, yes, this uh, obligation to write. So he took um, a, a box of um, Kleenex and, uh, you know, outside it was colored, uh, blue, pink, I can't remember, but inside it was white. So he could write on, um, and uh, somebody, uh, a friend of his, was on the beach with him and gave him a, a pen or something, and he, he started to, to write some notes, and that is the beginning of the second cello concerto. Cello concerto. And this wonderful piece of Kleenex box is, of course, preserved with the manuscript. I did it. I did it because I knew the story, you know. I, I think it's, it's quite important, and he was in a bathing costume and he was sitting on the sound and uh, he couldn't uh, avoid it. That, it, that was uh, so uh, important for him, you know. So he had to, to write. Mm -hmm. 